Thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Uh, grazie a tutti, particolarmente grazie artissima. Uh, let me briefly uh, introduce José Noé Suro, who's not only a very, very dear friend of mine, but he's also a constant source of uh, content and inspiration. Uh, José Noé has uh, an incredibly privileged knowledge of the art world. He's not only a collector, but he's uh, a facilitator and a catalyst. Uh, he has probably one of the most uh, peculiar relationships to art, which makes also his collection very uh, unique in the way that he has a collection where, I mean, a good, I don't know, two-thirds, or I mean, a good portion of, 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 of your collection, you've been involved actually in the, in the, in the process of, of materializing um, the, um, the work for, for the artist. Very briefly, he, um, um, his, his father started a, a ceramic company that is, uh, is uh, one of the biggest ceramic companies in, in Mexico and very well known uh, around the world. And through coincidences in life, uh, through, through your brother, you ended up uh, approaching the, uh, the, uh, the art world, uh, collaborating with artists at the beginning like uh, Jorge Pardo, and that has developed into uh, creating, facilitating, producing the, uh, the artworks for, for almost every possible fantastic, brilliant, and, and um, interesting artist that you can imagine that goes not only from ceramics, but also uh, even to video, to uh, all kinds of materials. Uh, so for me, it's a, a great privilege to, to share this um, half an hour with, with him and with you. Uh, and briefly about me, I am, um, well, I, I have this magazine. Uh, Solar, which we uh, recently launched. Uh, this is our second issue. The first one came out in, in March. And it's the first independently published lifestyle magazine in Spanish with uh, worldwide distribution. Uh, we publish mainly out of, uh, out of Spain, but uh, Spain and New York. But the magazine is, uh, as I said, distributed all around the world with a special focus in, uh, in, in Spanish-speaking countries. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, uh, shall we, is, is there something you, you would like to add for the start? I just want to thank Artissima to invite us to have us here. It's a privilege to be here in this city. I like the city a lot and also during the white truffle season it makes it more incredible the <laughs> visit to Torino. So thank you very much. Okay, then we go, we go to the booth. So basically we've had, we have selected three, uh, three artists or Jose Noé has selected three artists uh, with a very I mean, the, the connection between those three artists, although there are in the works, there is a common thread, which I would say um, a sense of humor is definitely something that, that the three of them share, but also something that is um, very special and which is the, the fortune about this talk is that Jose Noé has had a personal relationship with the three of them uh, in, uh, in producing uh, works for them in... in um, in, in Guadalajara, in Mexico. So the first one is uh, Jim Lambie, which we have here in, in the back. And, um, and I'll pass the, uh, the microphone to Jose Noé to tell us a little bit about his experience with Jim Lambie when you collaborated with him for the first time. Well, I guess that me as a collector has this uh I see the things a little different than a normal collector. Uh, I always try to collect and start a relationship with an artist that I think that has a potential to, or that I would like to work with him. And Jim was an artist that I was behind him for a couple of years, for many years, until we start working together. This was maybe, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, and we make a big, big project together. It was, it was called The Birds that were like 40 sculptors in ceramics, around one meter and a half. And each one was unique and, and, and different paint uh, uh, finish. So what we, do is, what we did is he came to Mexico, he brought these small, base, small bases and bottles of ceramics that her mother had 
all his life in his house. In, uh, and he told me, let's make this 200 times bigger, no? So that, that was the way we started to produce this, this project, no? So I made all the pieces in Mexico. We packed and sent and send him to, to Glasgow, and he painted and finished the, the, the sculptures. But I, I, I mean, this is the way that I like to work. I, I always, when I am buying something with the, uh, of, with the idea of inviting him to come to Mexico, I think that is uh, like a way that I can introduce with the gallery and the artist, no? Does it also happen the other way around that you first approach by an artist, then you get to know the artist, and then you start collecting him? It, it happens that way, but at, and more and more is happening that way, no? Because we we are known by more people now, and, and a lot of artists are calling us and asking us for for to come to Mexico and work. But at the at the beginning, it wasn't like that. We have to. It was your way to seduce yes, them? Yes. <laughs> Well, seduce the dealer first and then the artist. It's, as, it's easier the artist than the dealer. And tell us a little bit, I mean, about the, um, the work of Jim Lambie, the um, irony of his work, the, um, the piece that we have here in the back. Uh, where, do you, uh, where do you place the relevance of his work in, um, in, in contemporary art world today? Well, for, I think that he, is a, uh, he has a very unique voice in a way that he's influenced by music and pop culture like uh, like a lot of artists but the way he approached to it with these everyday materials and and for example these famous series of the doors are these real literally doors that he 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 wore with or the, for many years he wore with with records and now this is an example of like a potato bag that he make it like a painting no so i i, I for me, it's incredible how they can work and change any materials. If you see the pieces that we did together, uh, you won't notice that they are made of ceramic. They could be made of any material. It was just the, the, the way that he finished made them each one unique and, and, and very personal work. I think that also in your position, you, you surely get to, uh, to know the artist very well and you probably read things um, between the lines that... that um, that other collectors or other art professionals don't necessarily uh, know or, or can decipher. Is there something in particular about this work that, that comes to your mind or about some of his, um, his works uh, or an anecdote that you would like to talk about with, with Jim? Well, Jim is a, it's a fantastic artist and a crazy person. And it's super, I mean, when he went to Mexico, it was his first time in Mexico. And he, I, I used to have a, a nightclub in Mexico those days, and he DJ like for a week in the in the nightclub, and it was a. I mean, my wife is here, but she won't let me lie that I think that I sleep like 20 hours in a week during his visit. <laughs> he was going out every night as crazy, and we went to all these. I never met more bars and nightclubs in Guadalajara in my life than with a, in a week with Jim Lambie. There's, there's one thing that I, that I would like to say about uh, Guadalajara, the, the hometown of, of Jose Noé, and also about his role in Guadalajara. I mean, Guadalajara is, you have obviously Mexico City, which is uh, the capital, and it's by far the biggest city in, in, in Mexico. I mean, like fighting always the, the, the number one position for the biggest city in the world. But you have Guadalajara, which is a city slightly in, in the north of, of the country. I mean, north of Mexico City, you still have thousands and thousands of kilometers until the border. But it's a city that, uh, with Jose Noé as, as, as one of the main catalysts, um, has given so much to the contemporary art scene in Mexico. It's also very interesting that a lot of what you see as as what is exported um, as Mexican comes from Guadalajara, be it, or from the region of Guadalajara, be it tequila, be it mariachi, charros, uh, the Luis Barragan, no? And, and Guadalajara for a long time, even in Mexico, because Mexico has this very centralized, not only culture, but this is, it's a very centralized country. Guadalajara hasn't been completely in the limelight until recently with a group of um, of artists that are a second generation to the to the big 
artists from, from the uh, 90s and early 2000s in Mexico, that all of them are very close to Jose Noé. Uh, funny enough, they all have a connection with, uh, with architecture, that, which, as I said, in Guadalajara is, is, uh, is, is something very important. It has a very, very strong tradition. And it's also a city that, as Jose Noé was saying, is, is a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and during, just before the, um, uh, the weekend, before the art fair in Mexico City, before, before Sonamaco, uh, they always organize um, uh, a pre Sonamaco in Guadalajara, which is something that if you have the chance to go and to check out the galleries and, and the studios in, in Guadalajara, you should um, definitely, definitely do. Something interesting that you were mentioned about Guadalajara is it's hard to be the second city of a yeah. country, and, 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 and more with Mexico City, there is a monster, has these incredible museums, and so we've, we've been like fighting to to create a, a to seduce people who is coming and i think that it's a great city to visit the the artists the architecture the food is now in a great moment and and we i mean it's for years and years in the 20th century not not only all the clichés from mexico are from guadalajara it's also that some of the best and the most well known artists in mexico they were from Guadalajara, and the city wasn't very generous with, with them. They left the city as soon as they can. And we're talking about Orozco, we're talking about Maris Izquierdo, Luis Barragan, Dr. Atl, all these incredible artists, or Juan Rulfo. I mean, these uh, fantastic uh, people who define Mexico in the in the in the in the 20th century. And now is the first time that this generation that you mentioned with Jorge. Mendes Blake, Jose Dávila, Gonzalo Lebrija, and also Eduardo Sarabia, he's from Los Angeles but lives in Guadalajara. They decide to stay and make something in Guadalajara, yeah. and I think that that's super important for the city. I think that's a very good point, the decision of staying in, um, in a place which again is thanks to opportunities that they have had and to the commitment that they have to the city, which is uh, also which has a lot to do with the fact that they can produce the that they have had uh, for the first time the opportunity to foster their, their, um, their creativity. And also for us with the magazine, it's very important. I mean, we're very conscious about not doing everything in, in Mexico City and trying to, um, to decentralize the, uh, the, the, the culture in Mexico. But okay, here we are with um, our second stop, our next artist, um, Oscar Murillo, uh, who he is, uh, as, as most of you probably know, he's, I mean, he's a young, he's born 1986, if I'm not mistaken, Colombian. Uh, he's uh, one of the, the art world's uh, enfant terrible, uh, who has also collaborated with, um, uh, with Jose Noé. How did that collaboration come, come together? Well, this is, I, I mean, I choose to talk about Oscar because it's something that I think there is a phenomenon, uh, the way that the market is crazy about him and I really met him before this craziness. I saw a painting by him and, and also by references by a, a very good friend and curator, Cesar Garcia from Los Angeles. They told me, and in the moment that we were talking, he, like starting to communication by email and phone calls with, with Oscar, everything exploded like in three months. It was crazy. And I flew to 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 London to talk to him and I found this kid that is amazing, incredibly talented and, and who works in, a, in, in the art world in a very unique way. I think he has his studio and the family is very close to him and he was making these paintings, uh, really not trying to make them a precious uh, uh, possession or a precious thing. and, and, and I am not sure about this piece, but you, you, when you go to his studio in London, you'll see these canvases in the floor and, and people is stepping over and walking over and drinking and having parties and for, for sure dancing salsa mm -hmm. uh, for, for days and days or months or maybe years. No? And he came to Mexico and, and was for him, uh, well, if you know the history of, of uh, Oscar, he left very young. Um, Colombia, the, the father, and uh, took the family to to give them a better future. And he decided to go to London because James Bond. Huh. He was a big fan of James Bond, the, the father of Oscar, and he told, "I should go and take my family to the city of James Bond." No? And, and I think that that was an incredible thing. 
uh, the thing about Oscar Murillo is he, he's one of those artists, even though he's been in this moment of, you know, from, from his prices skyrocketed, he has been, he's always very conscious about the difference between the, 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 the price of one of his paintings and the projects that he actually wants to engage in and wants to do. You know? He says that he would never reject a project because the project itself, the budget of the project itself is uh, lower than, um, uh, than one of, of, of the pieces of his, of his paintings. And I think that is a quality that is always very interesting and appealing to, to a collector. You know? It's always an artist that doesn't really care about being collected or that doesn't really care about uh, his prizes or the preservation of his work is, is, is always, uh, I believe, something appealing. Yes, and I think that he has some very tough time, but he handled it incredibly well. I mean, if you are 24, 25 years and, so, and one day you're selling your paintings for a couple thousands of dollars, that was the price, and the next month you're selling them for 100 times more, and he is like the, I mean, I really admire him the way that he has manage this situation. I, I, I know people by far older and, and I don't know if wiser, but certainly not wiser than him, that they have become absolutely crazy for that. And he's the same guy. I mean, he's close to the family. I think that, that there's this distortion that the market create about him and, and these legends and then that he's like the new Basquiat. And, but I, I think it's really, really an uh, uh, interesting case for me, no? And I work, I, I, it's the first time that I am in the middle of a storm, people calling us like, huh. what are you doing? Where can I see it? Can I go? And people coming to Guadalajara just to see him working there. Uh, it was crazy. I think that's always, I mean, it's a very big challenge for, uh, for anybody working in the arts, being a, a visual artist, being a, a singer, being whatever it is, when you're compared to somebody like Basquiat when you're compared to especially now that we are and the expectations yeah are... no and also especially now that, that when when we're living we're, or where we're at least trying to live with a little bit of a more elaborate conscious and when you have somebody like yes I mean I'm having this very successful career but still I don't want to go behind you know like I'm not gonna lose my feet I'm not gonna you know and staying in touch with um with his career, with his family, with uh, what's really important. Uh, we're with um, our third and, and last artist, uh, David Medalla, from, uh, originally from the Philippines, although he, um, he immigrated to, the, to, to London uh, in, back in the 60s. Um, he is a very prolific artist, uh, one of the first artists to incorporate the in materiality, materiality to, uh, to sculpture. Um, and um, tell us a little bit about your experience with, uh, with David. Well, first of all, it was a surprise to see this boot in Torino. I wasn't expecting to see it. And this is one of the things that makes me more happy. And as a collector, uh, with this, in this uh, moment that the market is so crazy and the prices are skyrocketing, and most of the artists, of, of a lot of them, finding this guy like being rediscovered in an art fair, it was incredible. I met David Medalla through a book in this time that there was no internet, and, and we, were, we and my friends from Mexico City, from Guadalajara, were buying a book and then we, used, we let it use to everybody. No? This book, I remember the name, it was Exploding Galaxies. And I, and I saw this incredible artists making these pieces in the 60s, like the, the foam pieces from the same, same generation that Yoko Ono. Uh, and and he, he went, he left the Philippines as a child in a boat and went to Paris, lived with Man Ray. I mean, an incredible guy. And the book, if you can find it, I highly recommend you to, to, to read it. And by a friend, an artist from Mexico City, Gabriel Curi, that I work for for him, and I made his first sculptures. He 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 was the one who introduced me to David Medalla, no? So we contact him, and I told him, "You want to come to Mexico?" And he said, "Yes." So I, uh, it was maybe I don't know how many years, like 15 years, no, at least, a little more maybe, and 
I was starting to work with my father in the factory, trying to make this project with artists. He used to fire me every week from the factory. Like, you're fired, don't bring more artists. And, and so I, 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 I invite David and he told me, well, I will get to Guadalajara, meet me at the, tra at the bus station, uh, and I will be wearing a hat, a hat, no? And I said, well, how many guys from Philippines can be coming from Mexico City in the bus? And when I arrived to the, to the bus station, he, he was him wearing this big hat in the middle of the, of the bus station. And he spent 40, a little more than 40 days in Guadalajara. Uh, and I took him for lunch every day. And, and really what I wanted is I want, him to, I want him to make and I want him to buy him a, a phone piece. And he was bad in this, this, this conversation for days and days and days. And we, and he was, we talk about the phone piece tomorrow. We talk about the phone piece next week. And he was, he was obsessed, for example, with mariachis. And he was telling me, we have to make a piece with mariachis. Let, let's, the mariachis is a typical uh, music band in, in, in Mexico. And it's original from, originated in Guadalajara. And he told me, can we make a mariachi that we dress with the colors of the rainbow? And he was obsessed with this, with this uh, mariachis. So at the, at the end, he, we, fi we finished this visit and we talked a lot and, and, and it was incredible, I have to say. And then I told hey, David, but we are not doing anything and you're going in, an, in one hour to the airport. Give yeah. me a paper, give me a paper. So before going to the airport from my office, he took this big paper and made a drawing like in three minutes. And he told me, well, this is something that you have to make and produce. And I haven't produced it, it is this paper and we have to make the, a pipe of steel and cover it with um, and, and make the perforation of the drawing and the idea is that we have to put to fill it with gold dust that is something incredible and roll it in the floor and the drawing will be made in gold so it, it was an incredible experience with him uh, although I, I didn't produce anything for him but, uh, but this is an, an example like these, these second chances in the art world are, are incredible, no? And how, how have you, in terms of like, with, starting with ceramics and with what you're saying now uh, about this uh, unfinished collaboration with, uh, with David, how did you migrate from one material to another? When did you start experimenting with other materials? Um, the thing is in, in, in Guadalajara particularly, is that it's a city who, who has a very long uh, tradition on handcraft, no? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who are very skilled in different medias, and they are having hard times, but I think that's happening here in Europe also. Like, people don't appreciate anymore as used to the, the, the handcrafter, no? So the, the artists uh, start to ask me for doing that, that some different things, and I've been uh, getting this, uh, or being in contact with this incredible uh, artisans and, and we offer the, the opportunity to work with artists and change actually their, their uh, lives because they, they having tough time, they, don't, they are not selling a lot and we were working, for example, there's a case of this guy who used to work in tin making uh, Christmas ornaments for all his life and then suddenly nobody wants to buy them and now he works basically exclusively for Marcel Sama, <laughs> making his sculptures and, and of course it's, it's, it's been great for him and for Marcel and for Marcel. So I always try to do what the artists want to make and I, we, 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 reach, we, we do a research on, on, on materials. Sometimes work, sometimes doesn't, but we always try. No? And as a collector, tell us a little bit about um, a phone piece. No? Like what, uh, I mean, besides it obviously being a historic, um, a historic piece, what do you do with it? <laughs> I don't know. First, I don't know if I ever install it, but I, I mean, what I found fascinating is that these pieces were had, had their moment in the in the in the 60s in London, and then you, you didn't see or hear anything about him for four years, and then you go to the to the new Tate, Tate Modern building, and they have the phone piece, and I, you see a phone piece in 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 an art fair. I mean. That's, I mean, for me, that's uh, the kind of artist as a collector that I that I more focus and interest in. Not 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 the evident things that you can see in the big galleries or or in the in the market. No, that is the case of of of, of uh, Oscar Murillo. That you have to be very very fast 
yeah. if you wanna if you wanna buy a painting or something like that. But there's also these incredible artists that are completely forgotten, and 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 you can work with them or you can collect them. Uh, and so, and I mean, in the, with the time, the, the time will will put them in their place, no? We would like to to thank Artisima, which is. Uh Every year, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, it's, it's the perfect way to start the winter. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's really an art fair that, that, at least in my case, I love to come back, not only because of the fair itself, but of the uh, amazing curatorial program that, that you have throughout the city. It's really um, an absolute treat for, for every one of us. So thank you very much for inviting us.